Hello everyone and welcome back to Madzukhrov. Today we are here to talk about parasitology. But before that, I would like to tell you what is a parasite. It is an organism that depends on other organisms for its survival, like it will need nourishment and shelter in order to live. For example, Entamoeba histolytica. Medical parasitology is the study of those parasites that infect and cause diseases in human beings. What are the characteristics of a parasite? Each parasite has two names. First one is genus that starts with an uppercase letter. Second one is species name that starts with a lowercase letter. For example, Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba is the genus name, that's why it starts with the capital E, and histolytica is the species name, that's why it starts with small h. If a parasite causes a disease, it is called parastosis or parastasis. For example, a giardia lamblia causes giardiasis. The word asis at the end of a disease indicates that it is a parasitic disease. Host. Host is an organism which harbors the parasite. There are three main classes of host. Definitive host, which harbors the adult stage of a parasite, where parasite utilizes sexual method of reproduction. Intermediate host, harbors the larval stage of parasite. In some cases, larval development is completed in two different intermediate hosts, referred as first and second intermediate hosts. Paratenic host, a host where the parasite remains viable without further development. A parasite is classified into two main classes, protozoa and metazoa, which are also known as worms. Protozoa are further classified into sarcodina amoebas, for example, Entamoeba histolytica. Next, sporozoa. These include sporozoans, for example, plasmodium. Next one is mastigophora. These include flagellates, for example, giardia lamblia. Fourth one is ciliata. These include ciliates. For example, Balantidium coli. Metazoa are further classified into platyhelminthes, also called flatworms, and nemathelminthes, also called roundworms. Platyhelminthes are further classified into trematodes and cestodes, while nemathelminthes are classified into intestinal and somatic nematodes. Classification of parasites on the basis of location. Endoparasite, a parasite that lives inside the host's body. For example, protozoa. Ectoparasite, a parasite that lives outside the host's body. For example, orthopods. Classification of parasites based on habitat. Obligate parasite, also called holoparasite, is a parasitic organism that cannot complete its life cycle without exploiting a suitable host. If an obligate parasite cannot obtain a host, it will fail to reproduce. Facultative parasite. It is an organism that may resort a parasitic activity but does not absolutely rely on any host for completion of its life cycle. Accidental parasite, also known as incidental parasite, is that organism that establish itself in unusual host, the host where it normally does not parasite. Here, the host is referred as unnatural host. Aberrant parasites, those parasites that enter aberrant hosts in which conditions are not adequate for survival, further development or sexual maturity of a parasitic organism. Classification of parasites based on duration, temporary parasites, and permanent. Temporary parasites are organisms whose parasitic mode of life is limited to few or even one stage of development. 
An example of this is larval stage of harvest mites, while the adult stage is non-parasitic. Permanent parasites. When a parasite is permanent, several generations occur in or on the host. Oh, head lice are an example of this. Classification of protozoa based on medical purposes. Intestinal protozoa, for example, a giardia lamblia. Urogenital protozoa, for example, Trichomonas vaginalis. Tissue protozoa, for example, Leishmania. Blood protozoa, for example, Plasmodium. Host parasite relationship called symbiosis is any type of close and long term biological interaction between two different biological organisms. It can be mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. In mutualism, both the partners get benefit. In commensalism, one partner gets benefit while the other partner is not harmed. In parasitism, one organism is parasite and the other organism is host. Parasite gets benefit and in return, it harms the host. Alright guys, thanks for being with me. I hope this video was helpful. If you want free handouts of this video, these are on my website and the link to my website is in the description box. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, the links are in the description box.